So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Siwan Unpapak Metin. I am a PhD student at the Australian National University and um, Australian National University Collection. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge the Ngunawal people who are the traditional custodians of this land on which we are meeting and play and pay respect to the elders of the Ngunawal nation, both past and present. Today, I'm going to talk about um, the research project entitled Taxonomic Revision of the Neglected Moth Genus Symphyta Lepidoptera Lazio Campidi in Australia, based on their morphology and mitochondrial genome. Oops. Um, we know that moths are so diverse, and we have about 70 families in Australia, and Lazio Campidi is one of them. The trees on the left is to show where Lazio Campidi, including the symphyta moths, are placed in the Lepidoptera phylogeny. And in Lazio Campidi, there are about 1,500 species in 150 genera distributing worldwide. However, only 73 species in 12 genera are found in Australia. Between the 12 genera of Lazio Campidi moths, um, Symphyta is an interesting one. Why is that? Um, currently, there are only five described species in the mixture Australia. Unfortunately, we know very little about them. For example, we know the host plant of, of some species and not know where to find them based on the collection record. But we don't know anything about the life history and species boundary. Furthermore, um, the latest taxonomic revision of this genus was done by Turner about 100 years ago in 1924. And it is surprising that um, within this uh, 100 years, no one is interested in looking at them. Um, however, the study by Turner in 1924 was based on the morphological characters like um, wing pattern. And we know that um, using morphology to identify species can underestimate or overestimate the number of species and cannot reveal species complex. Um, let's look at the symphyta specimens at ANIC, for example. We have um, the collection of all five species. Each species has variations on wing pattern, but we don't know if um, the variation is just the variation within species or it is the new species that doesn't fit the original species description. Furthermore, um, um, Turner didn't contain the information like the genital structures and DNA sequences which are required in the present standard. To date, um, some people have sequenced the one gene from Symphyta moths, but they didn't use it to revise the genus. So I downloaded the sequences from both and built a tree. Um, the tree showed interesting result um, as um, the symphyta was recovered not to be monophyletic as they have three unrelated lineages as shown uh, as indicated by the red bars. And in addition, um, previous moth experts at ANIC have also identified the unnamed species and placed them with the other five symphyta species in the collection. So um, based on all the, um, the available information and observation, we can start to think that if the symphyta is uh, monophyletic and how many species of symphyta are there in Australia? Um, the aim of my study is to use the integrative taxonomic approach to revise the genus symphyta. And to achieve that, I dug into their morphology and also use the collection genomics. In morphological study, I examined about 500 um, spe uh, symphyta specimens at ANIC, and I classified them into morphological species based on the similarity of wing pattern and their genital structures. And this is the result. I can recognize 12 morpho species based on wing pattern as shown in the slide. Interestingly, um, Symphyta oxygramma here in the red box forms a species complex containing seven morpho species. 
let's now move to the male genital structures. Um, this is the first time that um, male genitalia of symphytic moths are exposed to public as no one has ever dissected them and, um, and published the knowledge about their structures. Compared to the general structures of male genital structures, symphyta have highly modified ones. For example, um, the structure called vulva here uh, is divided into two parts. And the vinculum, which is the modified abdominal seg segment, has the extended uh, structure called cubi. So based on male genital structures, I can recognize 15 morpho species. And here, the symphyta oxygrama complex consists of 10 morpho species. So um, the number of morpho species in this complex increased by three when compared to the classification based on wing pattern. So far, we can see that um, when we use different character system, we like can give, or we can receive the different results. Um, the second part of my study is to obtain the DNA sequences from pin dried and old museum specimens. Um, the total number of specimens that I uh, used in my study is 253 and 168 specimens are from symphyta moths. The authors are from um, the type species and the synonyms of all other Australian Lazio um genera. I included every genus of Australian Lazio um, because I didn't know I don't know which um, taxa is the close, closely related um, group of symphyta. And also I wanted, I, I wanted to taste if symphyta is monophyletic or not. Um, the age of the specimens ranges from one year to um, 100, uh, more than 100 years old. Um, and to obtain the DNA uh, from this moth, I picked a leg of each specimen and do the DNA extraction then I shared the DNA to, to make them into uh, make, make them into a small pieces and constructed the DNA libraries. Then I submitted the constructed DNA libraries for sequencing using the Illumina MySeq. Um, the output from Illumina sequencing platform is a large number of small um, short reads. And with the help, from my supervisor, um, those short reads were assembled into a larger DNA context. And then um, they were annotated. And here uh, we found that 83% uh, of all samples yielded the complete mitochondrial genome. Then um, each gene sequence was aligned and cleaned up and, and the process uncleaned up data sequences were used to construct the maximum likelihood tree. And this is the phylogeny of Symphyta. Indeed, it is a phylogeny of Lazio Campidi in Australia because I include every genus, as I, as I mentioned before. And from the tree uh, on the right, four of 12 genera are monophyletic as indicated by the red bars. Um, the genus Symphyta is not monophyletic because it consists of two clades, A and B. In clade A, it consists of um, Symphyta nephilodes and the Symphyta oxygrama complex, which is not monophyletic. In clade B, sorry, in clade B, it contains the other Symphyta species, um, including the unnamed Symphyta. Interestingly, um, three species of holy Phyletic power good are also embedded in this clade as indicated by the red arrow. Uh, when we look into morphology and phylogeny of symphyta moths, we can see that um, the morphology is in agreement with the phylogeny. Based on wing pattern, the moths in clade A seems to have um, the striped zigzag lines on and the dark dots on the wings, while in clade B, they seem to have pale and white or dark um, dot on their wings. The male genitalia structure are also 
congruent with the tree. For instance, um, the valves are finger shaped in clade A, but blunt in clade B. The tegument is uh, strongly sclerotized in clade A, but membranous in clade B. And um, the cubide is smooth in clade A, but dented in clade B. So um, the evidence from my study suggested that symphyta split into two genera, one of which is the true symphyta, as it is uh, at its carries the type species. And it is clade B that will be the true symphyta. And um, this clade consists of um, symphyta sauropis, symphyta nictopis, um, Copodes, the unnamed symphyta, and the three mis misplaced species of Paraguda. Um, symphyta nephilodus and symphyta oxygram are complex containing 10 species will be placed in a new genus. And with all of this, make up uh, 18 species. However, um, redefining the monophyletic genera from Symphyta is still on the long journey because of the non monophyly of other Australian um, Lasiocampic genera. In summary, um, this study has demonstrated the use of collection genomics and morphological data to solve the problematic uh, taxonomic issue. And, sorry. Um, the traditionally defined symphyta consists of two unrelated lineages and 18 species, um, 10 of which need new names and species description. Uh, in addition, this study also provides further evidence for the abundance of dark species or cryptic species like the oxygramma complex in Australia and the need for um, taxonomic revision. Um, I would like to thank Andre Zwick, Di Hartley, James, Nichols, and his friends, Scott Keo and ANU and e friends for their contribution to my research. Thank you. Thanks, Siwanon. Um, I'm so much more comfortable listening to people talk about insects than marine things. Um, that was awesome. Um, got any questions in the chat? Um, I've got a comment slash question from Nick. Can you, do you want me to read that out? Uh, Nick just says, I imagine there's many other genera that will split into, oops, uh, heaps of cryptic species once some, someone, once someone addresses them with this level of scrutiny. Did you want to comment on that, Suwanan? Sorry. Sorry. Oh, wait Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right. Did you want to make a comment on Nick's comment? Um, otherwise, yeah. I, yeah. So, yeah, actually, most um, insects in Australia, we identify them based on the morphology and, and, and we like when we do more um, detailed study, we we usually find that there are more than um, the original descriptions. So when we like use the new technology to study them, we can like reveal the what what do you call um, the, the the diversity of Australian fauna. So yeah. Do you think that would get um, complicated much more by adding fresh material? Um, by adding more fresh material, I, I, I think we would um, by adding more fresh material, we might not get. How to say it? <laughs> I would say that um, the phylogenetic reconstruction might be 
uh, well resolved. Yep. From yep. the management area. Yep. Yeah. Awesome. Um, there's a few more questions um, in the chat if you want to answer those directly. Um, but we might move on because it's 4:30. Um, next.